Happy sunshine, boys and girls. Lunacy's back. We're going over the transcript from the grand jury in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you remember, Parker Still Steele is on the witness stand. And we had some interesting comments. We left off on page 11, and everywhere it shows this letter A, that's the answer that Parker Still is giving. Everywhere it says Q, that's a question that Miss Davidson, the prosecuting attorney, the U.S. attorney, is asking. And so we're going to pick, pick up right here with just some interesting verbiage that's going on, and I'm still puzzled by it, but maybe it'll clear itself up as we read along. Right, ma'am. This is... All right. So there you've got Mr. Bean identify himself. Randall Keith Bean. Provide a mailing address, physical address, and an email address. All... And, you know, identifiers for Mr. Bean there. So everything from line 1 through line 5 is referring to Randy Bean. And for whatever reason, on line six, the court reporter is typing the witness, which is Parker Still. So I'm, I'm wondering why, why is it specifically labeled the witness? <clears throat> and if this is Parker Still, what is where where did this come in from he's he's giving he's talking about page three is this and then is page three of what you're providing right yes ma'am this is all right so there you've got mr. bean identify himself Randall Keith bean Providing a mailing address, physical address, and an email address, all, and, you know, identifiers for Mr. Bean there. And if this is still Parker Still, it would continue, wasn't it Ricky on one of those forms? <clears throat> the witness. How strange. And then the prosecuting attorney says, no, Ricky. Do you know who Ricky is? What? <laughs> like, I wonder if she's confused by what happened on line six, and I have no explanation for why this is there. Sir, it's my understanding again, provided information provided to me by USAA that that is possibly his brother. Uh, what? I really want to know, who is it that's first mentioning Ricky? Is this Parker Still or is this someone else? And the U.S. Attorney doesn't seem to understand the flow of this she she appears like she doesn't know what's going on no Ricky and a pause do you know who Ricky is and then and then this is very interesting because this is Ms. Davison that's asking the question and Parker still is addressing her as sir. Sir, it's my understanding, again, provided, and our double hyphen, information provided to me by USAA, who, who at USAA, that that is possibly his brother. <laughs> so some unknown person provided information that it's possibly his brother. 
What place does this have in testimony in a grand jury? What, what's going on with this Ricky stuff? And then the next thing we have is a juror speaking to say, okay. Now, I know the courtroom procedures for a grand jury are different than the vast majority of hearings and court proceedings that I have experience with. I wasn't, I wasn't in involved with anything where where the jury or a juror was specifically asking questions you know this is i was i was involved with hearings that happened long after uh, a person been arrested and it's important to note that this indictment hearing this grand jury hearing its purpose is to establish whether or not there's probable cause to go out and and arrest Mr. Bean of the crime that is purported. And I'd also like to note that the only attorney that's present, well, <laughs> the only attorney that's having a functioning role in this as an attorney, I should say, is the U.S. attorney. The grand jury, uh, this th these hearings are very lopsided because you've got basically the cop or Parker Still. You've got the U.S. attorney or the prosecuting attorney, and then you've got the jury and you've got a judge. There's nobody here to lend any kind of voice for Heather or Randy. There's nobody there to stand up and object. There's nobody there to say, hey, these are leading questions. And also as part of these proceedings, it appears that the, the jurors are interactive as part of this process. As evidenced on line 13, the juror says, okay, well, how many people are on this grand jury? It just says the juror. Which juror is it? How many how many jurists are there? Are there are there twelve? Twelve people on this jury? I don't know how many get get assembled for a grand jury. But why doesn't it say, you know, juror number four? Just the juror. This is all very vague, guys. And then who is the witness? I mean the witness is, as far as we know, Parker still. Okay, Mr. Bean's brother. So it's somebody else. Okay, yes, sir. And then we're back to Miss Davidson. Uh, I don't know how to decode what's going on here, guys. So we're just gonna read through it and, and just note that we've got questions about what's going on here. So tell me if I am correct but until your understanding, he could make this account out to someone who was also on the account with him. Like in this case, Ricky E. Bean, is that? That's my understanding of how it works. But he didn't have to, and here is not checked. That's correct. I don't see it checked there. Did we already do page three? Yes, ma'am. This is, this is really awful question and answer here for as far as a transcript goes. This looks like a lot of pointing and referencing of documents is going on here, but other than, but well, we really don't, I guess they're on page three. Did we already do page three? But, so are we on page three? And, and what are these pages? I, I wonder if they're later in this document. I don't know. But this transcript is getting really murky. We don't know what he's talking about. Page four? Okay, page four. You'll see right there you this is a, it tells you what kind of CD do you need? Fixed, adjustable, variable rate. 
there's information about interest being paid. And you'll see at the bottom it says, and I guess this parenthetical expression here, reading, means that Parker still is reading directly from the paper. Deliver all certificates of deposit online. So this is an important page right here because it tells the account features. Ladies and gentlemen, so I'm looking at the top. You've heard me talk a little bit about this was a fixed CD. It, the box checked super because of the dollar amount. You'll also see it's a one month term CD there. So that's, that's, and then you'll see just how you want the interest to be paid. Add it to the balance monthly. So this is where you find it, right? Page six. Is he, is Parker still asking another question? So this is where you find it, right? How bizarre, guys. Wow. And then the defense, or not the defense attorney, the U.S. attorney, Davidson, is responding, page six, question mark? Yes, ma'am. So this is, again, make your initial deposit. It says from checking or savings account, where it's my understanding from this, if you had a USAA account, that you wanted to put money in from there, and if you had another account with them, you could put that money in at this, at this stage right here, but that's not what happened. And so it shows use other account. Right. So did Mr. Bean click on use another account? That's my understanding. Yes, ma'am. He would have clicked on that. Well, this is this is poor here because Parker still did not witness Mr. Bean making this transaction. He's going through screenshots that USAA gave Parker still that are purportedly the screenshots or a replica of the screenshots that Randy Bean would have navigated through to make these accounts. So this here is completely garbage. This question and this answer, they are very leading. There's no way from the information that we have that we can say this at this point. Because remember, we're on July 18th here. This is before Randy Bean's been arrested. That there's, there's no way that he can make this claim. And he should know that. He's a lawyer, a defense attorney, a prosecuting attorney. He's a judge. He's an expert in identity theft. He's a special agent with the FBI. I mean, this guy knows better. He went to, he got his legal training at JAG. He was in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan as one of the top legal assistants or legal positions there. I just cannot reconcile the quality of his testimony here in the grand jury with his resume. The two don't mix. And then here you put the initial deposit, which he would put the amount in. Right, and I think it's reflected later on, yes ma'am. And then go to page, okay, so Miss Davidson, if we could just zoom in on top, on that top a little bit. So let's go through this one, it kind of summarizes. 
So we've got a certificate of deposit. We have the primary account holder as Randall Keith Bean. The additional account holder is Ricky E. Bean. The account features you see there as a fixed super CD. All the stuff we've been through about the one month term. And then most importantly, the initial deposit. You'll see this one for $999,000. Funds transferred from a non-USAA account. And then when I was talking about, right here it is, the routing number to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York was previously referenced. And the account number, Mr. Bean's Social Security number, minus one, with one number changed on there. Very, very interesting. And so this routing number, that is the routing number, the actual routing number to the Federal Reserve Bank. That is my understanding, yes ma'am. And that is, this number is the fake account number, right? Fake account number? Wow. How did money ever get transferred from one account to another if the number was fake? How did money ever get transferred if the name on the account was different than that of Randall Bean? So this is a very leading question. This reads like a script. Like this was planned to happen. God. I mean, ask a question like, well, did you investigate this account number? Is there such an account with this number on it? It's just no. This number is fake number, right? Like, right? Like she's even, she's asking the question. Well, she's really not, she's not asking a question. She's making a statement. This number is the fake account number. And then the question is, right? Gosh. <laughs> wow. I'm just, I'm blown away that this goes on at grand jury hearings, guys. I've never been to one. They only happen at the federal level. Which is Mr. Bean's social security number minus one digit. Yes, ma'am. Well, wait, wait, what is it? Up here he says, Mr. Bean's social security number minus one, and then a pause. And then he changes, it says, with one number changed on there. And then down here, line 12, the U.S. Attorney, which is Mr. Mr. Bean's Social Security number, minus one digit, and then a question mark. She's making a statement. The court reporter's putting a question mark on it. And all Parker still is doing is saying, yes, ma'am. What? What kind of kangaroo court is going on here, guys? This is, this is laughable. This is very puzzling. And then a juror is talking. Is that supposed to be the account number for the USAA, the account that he owns? Miss Davison's answering, no. This right here, and correct me if I'm, this is what he's purchasing the CD with. And so when he clicked on, remember from the other page, he clicked on use another account. Well, how can, we don't know who was on the computer. We don't know who is on the other side of this app or web page that was interfacing with USAA online account system. So there's, uh, I, uh, this poor grand jury, I mean, they just, I, oh, hi, sweetheart. Hold on, you want to say hello? Huh? 
No? Okay. She just wants love. Who is our sweetheart? I'm almost done. Got about 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, sweet. Uh, I, I feel like... I feel like they're crafting some big stage show in front of the jury. It, this feels like gaslighting. Uh, you know, I, I've got that feeling right now. Wow, we're only on page 14. All right, well, let's continue. The, the juror says okay. So this is not a USAA account. He's basically paying for this <clears throat> with Federal Reserve accounts. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. And then Miss Davison picks up again. See? So like she's showing a document. <clears throat> so we, we really need to see these screenshots that they're referring to. I, I mean, I... We've already seen so many other fake things pop up. Yes, ma'am, so that's the scheme. Is that right? That's the scheme, right? Wow, this is so unclear. <laughs> oh, the juror. I've got a question. Bless you, juror. I don't know what juror number you are, but bless you. How can he buy a CD? I mean, wouldn't they verify his account before they put the money in the CD? <laughs> well, the jury's fucking seeing this shit. Oh my gosh. Yes, sir, and I can kind of go into that. So just for everyone's benefit, the question that was asked to me was, wouldn't they verify the funds before it went to a CD? Which is a good question. And yes, the answer is generally, that is how it is done. Guys, <clears throat> this guy has just totally jumped into a different set of energies. He went from being confused or not knowing this <clears throat> case very well to like, wow. They prepared for this. Parker still was prepared for this. It, look, look how articulate this sounds. Yes, sir, and I can kind of go into that. So just for everyone's benefit, the question that was asked to me was, wouldn't they verify the funds before it went to a CD? Which is a good question, and yes, the answer is generally, that is how it is done. However, in this case, it was very similar to the best way I can describe it would be a bad check that essentially USAA populated, you know, in this case, the $999,000. USAA, he puts this information in, USAA funds it, as in my mind, I'm thinking as if somebody presented a bad check to USAA, the funds go into the account. Once USAA realizes, once they get a notice back that these it's not a valid account number. USAA reverses the transaction. However, the funds have already been withdrawn. Does that make any sense, sir? The juror's response, guys. Oh my gosh. You'd think the computer would kick it out. And his response is, yes, sir, you'd hope so. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are we talking to a sir or a ma'am? Wow. I think, I think this is a lie, guys. I don't, I don't know any bank that is going to take a check. It wasn't a, it wasn't a check, was it? This was, this was a wire transaction. No, it doesn't make any sense, Parker. 
Line 25, no. All right, here's a juror. I worked years ago back in the early 70s at a bank in Los Angeles. Yes, ma'am. And quite frequently, some of our large union trust funds would buy CD, these short-term CDs for quick turnover and generation of money. They would never turn a CD loose until the money had been officially transferred. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's obviously best practices, but in this case, USAA turned over the money. Oh, wait, hold on, when did... All right, let me go back, because the juror stopped talking and I still was thinking the juror was talking. And quite frequently, some of our large union trust funds would buy CD, these very, or these short-term CDs for a quick turnover and generation of money. They never would turn a CD loose until the money had been officially transferred. Okay, so the witness, so this Parker's still saying, yes, ma'am. And then it's Miss Davidson saying, well, that's obviously best practices. But in this case, USAA turned over the money. The juror says, in other words, they get stuck, question mark. Miss Davidson, well, that's not for us to determine. USAA turned over the money. A juror says, yeah, but it was fraudulently obtained is what it amounts to. Yes. But the routing number is actually from the Federal Reserve? Yes. And that may have had something to do, did, did. Could that have had something to do with USAA's thinking, you know, that this is a transfer from federal, from a Federal Reserve account? Is that part of the scheme or? And then Parker's saying, I'm just, I'm not real sure, sir. I mean, if, what, you know, what USAA's thinking was or, I'm sorry. What the hell is going on here, guys? Now Parker's saying I'm not real sure? Wow. The jury's just picked apart this case in a couple questions, guys. And they've got Parker back on the stand stammering. Look, they prepared for it. He's got this. He's got this script, these lines, this whole from page 15, line 9, pretty much all the way down to line 25. God, this is about as articulate and polished as he has been, but the jury just sees right through it right away. Bam! You'd think the computer would kick it out. And then just a couple more questions. And then we've got Parker still. I'm just, I'm not real sure, sir. I mean, if what, you know, what USAA's thinking was, or I'm sorry. Wow. And then the juror is, I mean, I, and then Parker says, if, can you ask it in a different, okay? And the juror says, this, this was not a transfer from a bank with a specific routing number. This was a transfer from a Federal Reserve account, a Federal Reserve Bank account. Yes, sir. I can't, I don't think I can have a Federal Reserve Bank account, can I? Yes, sir. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't want to speculate about what you could or could not have. But I would answer that it is my belief that the Federal Reserve target was targeted as part of this scheme, knowing what we know about individuals like Mr. Bean and these types of activities. Yes, sir. What? Oh, gosh. This is worse than the identity hearing, guys. 
I wonder if I wonder if what we've got listed here just in the first 17 pages is why this was sealed. This was a sealed indictment. And then the warrants that came off of this indictment, they were sealed too. They're, they're all stamped with sealed. Let's see. Sealed right up here. Sealed. Wow, guys. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of page 17, and this is pretty mind-blowing so far. Holy cow. Wow. To have this kind of testimony lead to any kind of indictment is suspect for me so far. Granted, we got uh, 50 more pages to go through. Or 60. 60 more pages to go through, guys. And, and it's already turning into a can of worms. Well, like I said in my videos reading through the identity hearing, if you've got any friends, family, acquaintances, anyone in your social group is in law school, if they're a lawyer, if they're a judge, if they're a clerk, if they're in law enforcement, if they're studying to be any part of our criminal justice system, please tell them about this case. Tell them to download these transcripts and read them to themselves. If they don't want to do that, point them to my videos. I'll read it for them. All right, I love you guys a lot. And we'll be back to revisit the rest of this soon. If you've got any light, love, or links for me, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. We'll see you soon. Grace's Pace.